everyone, Corey Danger back again, the video game archaeologist. Yeah, I know it's been a long time since I actually had a video game archaeology episode. That's because, well, I haven't been finding much. I know it's late, but today I was waiting for a good buy. I did spend a chunk of change on it. You decide whether or not it was a good deal or not. First off, this whole episode started off last week, Monday. When I just off on the whim, it was my day off, I went to Hidden Treasures. Browsing, perusing, and whatnot, I found this bad boy. A GameCube controller. It's good. It's very nice. On the bottom of the shelf, I actually found the rest of the system. The GameCube controller was over here, and the system and everything else was over down here. Down yonder. And it got some fading in the front, like it's been in the sun. There's like a section right here, and the first uh, portal where it's like, like suntan. Like everything else is suntan except this little spot where like the bikini was at or something. It came like this. Just the power cord taped to it, attached to the thing. I actually had to find the VGA in another bin. So they pretty much just like cut everything apart and just threw it into separate places. I went up to the lady that was in the front. How much would you charge for this? She said, I don't know. And she said, $5. I was like, that's pretty good. Not bad. I I'd take that deal any day. Five bucks for a complete system and controller. Sign me up. And then she just like, she started ringing me up. And she's like, oh, I forgot. Today's half off. So I got this whole system for $2.50. You cannot beat a deal like that. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can find somewhere else, but $2.50 for a complete GameCube system? I'll take that any day. I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. I couldn't pass that deal up. But then I went to Salvation Army and I couldn't find anything. There wasn't anything there, mainly because John, <laughs> Fantastic John, always beats me to the punch. Have you seen any of his other videos? He's been finding some good stuff, especially like a sealed Game Boy game from back in the day, I was like, ah, why couldn't I get that first? Damn you, Salazar! That's what's been happening. He's been beating me to the punch every time I go to Salvation Army. I got lucky with the GameCube, a hidden treasure. Caught the bug again. I kept coming back to those those two thrift stores for a con consecutive eight days I've been there. The only other find that I ever got was this one right here. It's a Super Mario Deluxe Game Boy Color. The sticker is its pretty messed up. I, I almost didn't recognize it at first. And I was checking out a PS2 uh, system that was in the, this cart, this little milk crate. The PS2 Slim, it, it was a little beat up and stuff, and I asked how much. He said 50 bucks for everything in the cart. I said I would, but the way my bank account is set up, the thing is, I got to check in in the savings, but all the money is in my savings. Before she went out, I actually picked this out of the crate, got this for $3. For a consecutive week, I kept going, and I haven't found anything. Facebook picked up this lot. This lot I was waiting for, I actually picked it up 30 minutes ago. I thought I wasn't going to get it because we were contacting through Facebook Messenger on our, our phones and my data cut out. So I was like, I'm here, I'm here, wait, don't forget about me, I'm here. But, you know, I didn't get any response because it wouldn't send. But luckily, uh, after like 20 minutes, it sent, went through and then we communicated and he walked towards me. Let me show you what I got. First off, we got this N64 regular console, the power adapter, the AV cords, just one set came with it was this nice bad boy an atomic purple n64 system uh, it doesn't have any expansion pack sadly it's pretty nice i've never had a colored system before it does have some writing on the side from who owned it i think i think i can take that out three controllers here pinkish ones they're pretty good the sticks are decent the buttons are good the atomic purple one and it has this little thing in it I don't really know what it is because the sticker's missing. It might be like a memory expansion pack or something. Some third party memory card. I got this for the games. So uh, it was a. Uh, he said on Facebook it was a 20 game lot, but I actually only picked up 17. So uh, someone's counting was a little off. But let me show you what I got. First off, we got a uh, Mortal Kombat 4. It's decent. All these games need a little cleaning, but it's alright. Mortal Kombat 4. Uh, wave Rave, Rave Waste, blah, 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 Wave Race 64. Got some writing on there. Uh, Tarzan, Disney's Tarzan. Nuclear Strike 64. WWF Warzone. Ridge Racer 64. Again with some writing. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. Hey You Pikachu. With no microphone. Pokemon Stadium. 
Pokemon Snap. Two Golden Eyes with writing on it. And now we come to the better, uh, the games I really want me, I really liked or wanted. Super Mario 64. Of course, you gotta have Super Smash Brothers. Donkey Kong 64, just needs to be clean, but it's pretty nice. Mario Kart 64. And the game that really uh, caught my eye because I'm trying to complete my collection, Mario Party, the first one. Not bad. So there you have it, that was my finds for this week and a half, I believe. Thanks for watching. I've been thinking about giving some tips and stuff uh, for the the not so avid collector or archaeologist out there. So let's uh, give some, I'll give five tips. Tip number one, when you're gonna go video game archaeology hunting, you have to be patient and really do your research. Like any real archaeologist, they do research, they, they try to uh, pinpoint locations where they think something was buried there. So that's what you gotta do. You gotta determine where you wanna go, what you wanna look for, how much are you willing to spend to get what you want. That's what archaeologists do, they spend them massive amount of manpower and man hours and money and things like that to really search for their finds or antiques or whatever they're looking for so that's what you gotta do you gotta be really diligent when you're out there on the field searching two i said it before but i really need to reiterate you have to do your research you can't really just buy anything that you see scrounge it up because you're going to pick up a lot of titles that don't sell that are not worth anything. They're actually more worth more throwing away than actually keeping or trying to sell. So do your research. Uh, pick up an app, app on your phone that contains a price guide for video games. That's what I did. As long as I have a, a decent guide to show me in the right direction as what to get, that's what helps me out to determine how much I want to pay for a certain game worthy to get and things like that. Number three, there's always going to be a lot of competitors out there for anything, anything you do, anything you want to collect, there's always competitors for it, like sports cars, race cars, Barbies, books, postage stamps or whatever, there's always going to be competitors, so you have to be a step ahead of them. The early bird gets the worm, as so they say, that's what happens with John, he's always out there, he's, he's, he's more dedicated to the looking and collecting than I am. If you have that will, if you have that determination to go out there, keep on hunting, and don't let that bother you if you don't find anything because it's, this game is a very hit or miss it's not as bad as sports cards and let me tell you that I used to be in sports cards uh, basketball cards before this and it was a very high risk high reward game sometimes I'd spend money and get nothing nothing on group breaks online you know so if you know what I'm talking about you know there's a lot of risk and a lot of reward but that game I got out of because I was wasting money because I sometimes, you know, like I said, I spend on something and I get nothing in return. So this is a, a lot more stable uh, industry of video games because one, it's, it's tangible. You know, prices usually are set already uh, with uh, sports cards. Some players have a lot, of, a lot of hype in the beginning and then their prices dwindle. So you might be saving onto that card. Like Michael Beasley, like he was badass before, but now he's like way because of his disgruntled problems so at least with games uh, it's, it tends to build up if it's a really good game like any Mario game from you know anything it always has a value it's a lot easier to find than sports cards you're not gonna see anybody at a flea market selling a Michael Jordan autograph basketball card for cheap because they don't know who Michael Jordan is everybody knows who Michael Jordan is but not a lot of people know that their Mario Party or Mario Smash Brothers are worth anything. So they're just like, oh, whatever. It's old. Take this for $2 or something. Because like I said, do your research. What number am I on? I, mean, I think I've been babbling a little bit. A four or five, I don't know. This is more of a seller's aspect. If you're going to pick up a lot of cheapy titles and you want to sell it off, sell it off as a bundle. Because as I've been watching a lot of... Uh, things on YouTube like uh, Aaron uh, video game sellers There's a lot of wholesalers out there that are just wanting to buy extra games it doesn't really matter what games they are as long as they have stock to sell so if you bundle up a whole bunch of games that are at least decent titles or not they don't have to be the best but they will sell if there's a whole lot of it because nobody's gonna want to buy individual games 
unless they're like high value games. But if you set up a whole lot, uh, people will buy it. There are wholesalers that will buy it, resellers that will buy it. And you know, you can pick them up super cheap and then sell it for at least a meager return of your money. So that's not that bad. Uh, the final tip I can say as a video game archaeologist is make new contacts, make new friends. Because if you're friendly with someone who has something that they don't really collect or anything, or they're just, they already have it in their collection, they might want to sell it and they might sell it to you for a cheap price. They might have a earthbound and they know what's worth something but they're not really into it for the money, they're just into it for collecting. Like John, he's cool. He's, he collects for collecting, he doesn't collect to sell. He may want to sell things to recoup any money he spent but he's not really in it for the profit, he's in it for the collectability, the fun of it. And so he'll sell me something where it could be worth a lot of money, but he'll sell me for a good bro price. And that's what's cool about having a good connection with other people. He's a collector, I'm a seller. He may beat me to a lot of stuff that I would like to have to sell, but he may have the extras and then he'll just sell me those extras at a really good cheap price that I'd be able to make some profit on. And he's happy and I'm happy, so it works out. Um, you know, those resellers out there, they could be a little iffy, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people do not like resellers. I am considered, I guess, a reseller sort of a deal. I sell online on eBay for profit, but I do try to sell it at prices that are very negotiable. I do put out a starting price at a price that I think it would sell online. Like, people are buying it for this price. I, I put it at a few dollars cheaper than that price as a starting bid, and then I put a a buy it now price for a little bit more than I think it would sell just to even it out so if you really want it and you, you want to buy it you'll pay for the extra couple bucks but if you're willing to wait uh, you can get it for a, a decent price I don't I'm like uh, not like those resellers that will sell this Mario Party for like 75 bucks just because they saw a buy it now on eBay for 75 bucks. That doesn't mean it's selling for that much. That's just someone that wants to sell it for the price. If it's still up there, that doesn't mean it's it's been sold, right? I think I went over my time limit in my memory card, but this is Corey Danger. Thanks for watching. Peace.